Welcome to Zambition, the channel on which we engage in dialogue with leaders from across sectors and generations. For Zambition, the term leader does not only refer to those in high-ranking positions. It includes everyone who is seeking to make a difference in society. Greetings and welcome to Zambition. I am immensely delighted to welcome our first guest on Zambition, Dialogues for Our Common Future. Our guest is someone who needs no introduction to us Zambians and as a continent of Africa. Her quiet approach to leadership has led her on so many connected paths that have included breaking many glass ceilings. She has been a freedom fighter, a business owner and leader, women's rights campaigner, and now the first female vice president of Zambia. She is Mrs. Inonge Mutukwa Winner. Your Honor, the Vice President of the Republic of Zambia, welcome to Zambition. Thank you very much. I'm so delighted to have been invited to participate uh, in this program. Ma'am, my first question is to invite you to show and describe an object or image that best reflects who you are and the journey you have walked so far. Thank you. The object I have chosen is a clay pot. I think everyone can see it. Yes. Uh, a clay pot is a lovely object symbolizing humility, fragility, uh, versatility and beauty. In the village, a clay pot is a functional tool. Mm -hmm. It is strong enough to store grain for the next plowing season. It is very versatile and a, a trusted storage for cold water where a fridge is non-existent. It looks beautiful at this one uh, when it's well decorated. But above all, this object can break in small pieces within seconds if it is not handled with care. And this short description of the clay pot mm -hmm. to me is how I would describe a relationship between a leader and the people you lead. Yeah. The clay pot represents the people and the handling of the people requires firmness, but with love, care, and a lot of uh, uh, humility when working with masses of people. And as a leader, there's need to inspire the people you lead so that you plant a seed of unity a seed of solidarity and respect. So this is my description of this 
a beautiful pot I'm handling in my, rather having my hands. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I truly appreciate. And uh, uh, that kind of fragility and uh, must have been present in the struggle for independence. You must have seen a lot of pain, anguish. How has that shaped you as a person? I believe the struggle for independence had a, a huge impact on the lives of many freedom fighters. Uh, first of all, there was something you were fighting for. Mm -hmm. And you were fighting sometimes on your own behalf, but on behalf of many others who were looking up to the few that were leaders at the time to take them out of the uh, yoke of uh, colonialism. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us who were students at the time participated in one way or the other. We participated in student union activities. Mm -hmm. We participated in the uh, civil resistance. We participated in the provision of uh, food to freedom fighters, the senior freedom fighters. And when I married a, free, a freedom fighter, mm. the struggle continued because yeah. our home was like a bus stop or a, a railway station where everyone has to pass through to consult to engage and to plan on how uh, the struggle should uh, be taken forward. So these are times that uh, the young generation may not understand and may not know. But because we were fighting a common cause, we were a very united group of people. Mm. Up to today, some of the people we fought with are still my close friends in UNIP. Although I'm not a UNIP member any longer, uh, but it shows that the struggle molded a lot of us into the human beings we are today. I'm very grateful, ma'am, that you describe uh, the unity of the people of our country now, Zambia, during the struggle for our liberation, our independence. What should unite us now? What should keep us united? I think what should keep us united is the knowledge that this piece of land that God has given to us it's the only something that belongs to us as Zambians. And we need to nurse it. We need to nurture it. We need to nurture these people to make sure that every Zambian feels that they are part and parcel of this great nation that uh, is so uh, endowed with so many resources that it just requires us as a people to tap on these natural resources that God has given this country to, pro, to make this country prosper. Thank you. Your Honor, you have served in many capacities, as I said in my introduction of you, mother, spouse, business leader, freedom fighter, civil society leader, and now the first female vice president of our country. There are certain uh, courageous decisions you have taken. Kindly share one courageous decision you have taken at a personal level and one courageous decision you have taken as a vice president. I would say that uh... Uh, as a freedom fighter and as a person 
uh, who married the freedom fighter, I was in the background of politics. But the time I made a decision mm -hmm. to enter public life was, I think, one of the uh, courageous decisions I've made in my life. And this was made at the time after my personal loss, the death of my husband, the death of my two sons, because after that, I was devastated. Mm -hmm. I was literally bewildered and absolutely broken. And during that time, I did not see any value of life. But thanks to my Christian spiritual counselors who intervened at that time and really touched my life at the greatest hour of need. And that really helped me to move on. And more importantly, in the same vein, my close uh, links with the women's movement proved critical at this time in drawing me into the public arena. In 2001, mm -hmm. I joined a political party and participated in the elections that brought me to parliament. So that was a very big uh, uh, decision to make. Now, in the public arena, I would say the second courageous national decision I took as I look back on my life was to avert a, almost a civil war, or I would say uh, a, a strife as I led my party as national chairperson then to a peaceful resolution at the height of a very serious intra-party conflict that threatened not only the unity of my party, but the security of the country. Following the death of our president then, Mr. Michael Chirufiasaka. I think these are two um, uh, courageous decisions I feel I took. Thank you very much for sharing those. And um, I hear you when you say after your deep family losses, your heart was broken. And it was colleagues, friends, family, and what you have referred to as spiritual leaders that supported you into finding your next calling, something to throw your energy, weight, and faith on. Thank you for sharing that. Your Honor, where do you, as the number two senior most leader of our country, make a difference? And where do you struggle? Well, that is a very uh, hard question. Uh, but I would say that uh, as a leader in my position as vice president, I think I have brought a fresh approach to governance with different views, perspectives, and uh, sensitive to the needs of the underprivileged. Again, my very presence in this seat of power Uh, I believe it forces society to change its perception about women and women leadership. Again, there is a, a general feeling that my being in this position has elevated the desire 
for young women or has inspired young women to feel that they can also uh, aspire for any higher office in their country. For example, a Zambian little girl can now imagine that she too can aspire to be a vice president and even for that matter, a president Mm -hmm. of Zambia. So my being here has helped to demystify the role of women as mere household uh, housewives and not fit for public uh, office. And we have seen that having more women in positions of decision making can have a powerful um, symbolic effect on society. And as vice president, my responsibility is to ensure that coordinated planning and the implementation of our national development plan is holistic and representative of the people's aspirations. The interministerial council of ministers that is shared by the vice president is enhancing multi-sectoral approach to national development. So I believe that uh, uh, all these issues symbolize that women can make a contribution to the development of their country. I may Uh, add also that I personally believe that gender equality is key to social economic uh, development of any given country. You can see that where there is a strong focus on gender equality, the lives of citizens, men, women, children can change. I mean, we have seen this uh, exemplified more in um, Scandinavian countries where gender equality is taken seriously, that even the quality of life can change because women come with another perspective to public life, to political life, that perhaps our colleagues, the men, do not see and cannot bring to the table. So that's why it's very important uh, that we believe that uh, uh, to accelerate gender equality in the country is the best thing that can happen to my country and my perhaps to the whole of Africa. I would be the last one, Your Honor, to argue against that. Uh, Being a son uh, and and a husband, I just know how things in my own personal life are better off just because I am sandwiched between uh, two incredible (laughs) women. So I I wouldn't argue against that. Your Honor, and where do you struggle? I think where I have seen a huge struggle that we need to address is for my country to realize that gender equality is a must Hmm. and how we can infuse uh, gender equality in all aspects of our development. Uh, We are busy working at it and we hope uh, that sooner Uh, and later, we'll see some uh, laws that can be enacted in our parliament to ensure that we have numbers of women uh, in the uh, areas of governance. I must uh, say that our president is a champion for women's uh, uh, empowerment as can be seen from the number of uh, uh, ministers, uh, female ministers he has appointed to cabinet, 
the number of uh, women on all uh, parastatal boards, he makes sure that the 50-50 uh, threshold is maintained in these boards. And this is the first time that Zambia has embarked on the uh, threshold of uh, ensuring that gender equality is addressed in our developmental agenda. Thank you. And ma'am, I must also mention that it's a very beautiful picture to watch uh, when you look at the leadership of our financial sector. Uh, so many vibrant, gifted, highly talented uh, females who are leading our banking and other financial institutions. That, that's a positive image to always look at. Madam Vice President, we will take a little break and when we come back i will ask you what your ambition is your highest aspiration for our country <laughs> science and technology is to embrace mathematics and that's why the Center for Mathematics Excellence has been created to enhance mathematics in the country. At the Center of Mathematics Excellence we demystify mathematics. For example, I'll show you how to simplify a simple equation like this one. x plus 6 is equal to 10 we simply subtract 6 from both sides to obtain x plus 6 minus 6 is equal to 10 minus 6 and x is equal to 4. That's how we simplify such equations. back our guest the first guest on Zambition is her owner the vice president of the Republic of Zambia I must stress the first female vice president our country has ever had your honor what does your ideal Zambia look like and feel like what is your Zambition what will it take for us to get as near as possible to that ideal Zambia you are going to describe? Well, you cannot really hope for a utopia on earth. Mm -hmm. But uh, the ideal Zambia I'm looking for is a Zambia in which each and every person is valued and treated with dignity. A Zambia that will be free of violence, especially violence against women and girls. My ideal Zambia is symbolized by the coat of arms where Zambia can utilize its human resources man and woman, that symbol we see on our coat of arms, working together to sustainably exploit our natural resources. We have water in this country, we have minerals, we have land and wildlife that can benefit Zambians and raise generations that are prosperous and prosperous out of hard work. And secondly, the power of the ego um, enshrined on our flag and the coat of arms must help us rise above tribalism, above 
petty issues and focus on the bigger picture. An equal society and a prosperous Zambia for all of us. This will be my ideal country. Thank you, ma'am. And what will it take for us to get there? We'll get there by working in unity, by improving on the skills of our young people, by knowing that every Zambian has a contribution to make to bring prosperity to this beautiful country. And I'm very confident that one day, it may not be within my lifetime, but one day we'll get there. I'm also equally grateful for your honor that you stressed a Zambia that is free of violence. And you happen to be in one of the top two powerful positions in our country. We are going towards an election how will you use your motherly nature, which has manifested through all the roles you have played and the power of your office to ensure that truly we demonstrate we are a peaceful country? Well, Martin, I believe in dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe in engaging each other so that we can solve some of the challenges that this country faces. Particularly as we are going towards elections, we need to impress on the leaders of other political parties, for example, to realize that this country belongs to all of us. And it is future is in the hands of all of us. Yeah. So violence will not uh, help the situation. And I believe uh, as we move on, we shall engage our colleagues in the political parties, in the civil society organizations, uh, in the NGOs to prepare ourselves, to prepare our minds for the elections so that at the time of elections, we do not face challenges of violence or any other uh, misconduct that may ensue uh, during that period. So I'm very confident that uh, uh, we'll be able to sustain this peace even during elections. The uh, security units of government are being schooled in ensuring that there's no discrimination in the administration of justice mm -hmm. uh, during elections. Um, every political player has to be uh, uh, considered as an equal partner yeah. uh, when it comes to elections. So I look forward to a very peaceful election I mean, Zambians have been given this freedom to choose the leaders of their choice. And no one should force any other one, any other person to vote otherwise. So I really look forward and I'm praying for uh, a peaceful election and peaceful campaigns. How, how will you help us avoid violence? You're quite nature. Does that fit today's politics? The politics of today uh, is very different from what it used to be. I know that even during UNIP days uh, at independence, there were some elements of violence here and there, but not at the level we have uh, uh, elevated uh, violence as if not really violence as such in the real sense of the word violence, but violence can come in many ways, even uh, using uh, 
language that is unpalatable. It's violence. Demeaning others is violence. So all the things, um, when piled up, will bring strife in the country. That's why we have to work against uh, anybody who is inclined to uh, use unpalatable language, use hate speech, uh, use all types of, uh, uh, of negative uh, projection of others uh, from doing what they want to do, or what they are doing already. As I said earlier, we can only stop this if we speak to each other. We can only stop this negativity if we sit down around a table and they realize that all these things are, are superficial. The real element is the human heart, the human nature, and the human person who we have to protect. So I believe uh, as PF, we are starting on a campaign to ensure that we interact with others to stop violence, especially uh, at the time when we hold elections in August. That the upbringing of their children is critical. It's not only mothers and fathers. I mean, you are the best example of a father who is so gender sensitive. So the, 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 the children, when they grow up, they usually somehow subconsciously, they imitate what they saw when they were small. And as you were alluding to the way I resolve uh, issues, it's because of my upbringing. I never had my father and mother quarrel. That was taboo in our home. Now I ask my elder sister and my other siblings, have you, did you hear our parents uh, fight? <laughs> uh, and all of them would say, no, maybe if they were quarreling, they did it behind the, the closed doors. <laughs> uh, so I mean, we, we need to impress on our children that life is about love, empathy, understanding each other. Even when you differ, you can sit down and uh, discuss your issues and resolve your problems. So I believe this is the way to go. It may sound old fashioned, but I believe in it. As I ask you my next question, your honor, I would like you to know that my prayer is that you lead a long and happy life. And my question is, imagine you could fast forward your life to that very last moment when it's time for you to pass on, to die. And somehow at that very last moment, you get the chance to look back to see the footprint you will have left on Mother Zambia. What would you like to see having left behind? Well, that is a, a, a tough question, but at individual level, I would like to to live a Zambia where everyone feels safe, equal, and given an opportunity to excel to the greatest heights. I look forward to leaving behind a country that appreciates every person, man, woman, people with disability, as full human beings who can make a contribution 
to the growth of their economy, to the growth of the development of their country. Thank you very much, ma'am. And my final question is, what is the best piece of advice you have ever been given? Um, I would say that uh, at personal level, um, well, professional and, uh, and during my political life, I have received a lot of advice from friends, family, and even from my president. But one advice that still stands uh, in my mind is that from my late father, when he emphasized the importance of education, especially education for a girl child. Mind you, during those days, girls were not supposed to go to school. Mm. But my father insisted, and he was rebuked in the community. Why do you allow your girls, myself and my elder sister, uh, uh, go to school? So that uh, 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 advice from my late father, I think, gave me impetus to like school so much that I used to walk seven miles every day to the nearest school from my village. Seven miles. Seven miles every day, except on Sunday and perhaps on Saturday. But I endured all this because somehow, I think I was pleasing my father at the time. I didn't realize the value <laughs> of education. Uh, but then uh, this proved uh, that uh, this old man was right uh, in what he tried to instill in his children. And uh, I'm still very grateful to him to have uh, brought up a family that valued education. Thank you very much, Your Honor. It has been an incredibly uh, beautiful pleasure as well as privilege to speak to you, to learn from you. Allow me, Your Honor, to say, as we move through the year, through the difficulties of COVID-19, may you use your quiet but effective nature to help us overcome the challenges we are facing, to help us be more united in the way you described the unity that the Zambian people had during the liberation struggle that we pull through elections as one peaceful country. May you use that natural gift and talent you have to bring things together in peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on this program. And uh, I value uh, this discussion we have had this morning and look forward to many more interactions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Having listened to the dialogue and followed my conversation with our guest, I now invite you to look at the drawing that emerged out of that dialogue. Take time to see the contours, the colors, the images that are reflected on the painting, on the drawing. And pay attention to what the drawing evokes in you. What are the feelings? What are the thoughts that are ignited by you looking at the painting? What thoughts does the painting generate in you with regard to your own leadership? What thoughts, feelings and images does this painting evoke in you 
with regard to the future of our country. What else does this painting make you think and feel? Kindly share your reflections on this channel so that we can continue the dialogue on the future of the country we all love, on the future of our nation.